10 people who survived the impossible. This feeling of invincibility is not warranted, and in many cases will be rewarded with death, dishonor and dismemberment. When humanity squares up against nature's wrath, the smart bet is on nature. But despite all the creatures, boulders, weather and general awfulness that can can be visited upon humanity, some challenges break the mold. No matter what the odds against survival are in any given situation, someone somewhere could and has wiggled their way out. Here are the 15 people who survived the impossible. Harrison Oaken In May 2013, a ship cook named Harrison Oaken went to the bathroom when what most people would consider is the worst thing that could happen at sea, actually happened. The ship he was in encountered severe waves off the coast of Nigeria that immediately sank the vessel killing everyone on board except Oaken. Mr. Oaken survived a dark, wet, and freezing ordeal for three days at the bottom of the sea breathing a dwindling supply of air that was trapped when the boat capsized. When rescuers came to get bodies out of the wreckage, they were surprised to discover Oaken alive and well. Hugh Glass after being mauled by a bear during a fur trapping expedition in Missouri the expedition leader asked Smo men to stay back with Hugh until he died and then bury him. The men, however, left while he was still alive and reported him as dead. When Hugh regained consciousness he crawled to the Missouri River and then made his way to Fort Knox on a raft. Along the way natives helped him by sewing bear skins over his festering wounds. Moro Prosperi Prosperi, a keen endurance runner, took part in the 1994 Marathon des Sables Marathon of the Sands in Morocco. Partway through the six-day 233-kilometer event a sandstorm caused Prosperi to lose his way. He ended up disoriented and ran in the wrong direction, ultimately running several hundred kilometers into Algeria. After 36 hours he ran out of food and water. He survived by drinking his own urine and eating bats resident in an abandoned mosque and the occasional snake found in the desert. Not wishing to die a long drawn out death, Prosperi attempted to commit suicide in the mosque by slitting his wrists with a pen knife he had with him. The attempt failed, lack of water had caused Prosperi's blood to thicken and clotted the wound before he died. After nine days alone in the desert he was found by a nomadic family and taken to an Algerian military camp and from there to a hospital. He was 186 miles off route, and reportedly had lost between 30 and 40 pounds 18 kilograms in body weight. Roy Sullivan Roy Sullivan was a Virginia forest ranger who had an incredible attraction to lightning. Or rather lightning had an attraction to him. Over his 36-year career as a ranger, Sullivan was struck by lightning seven times, and survived each jolt, but not unscathed. His seventh strike put him in the Guinness Book of World Records. In 1942, the first lightning strike shot through Sullivan's leg and knocked his big toenail off. In 1969, a second strike burned off his eyebrows and knocked him unconscious. In 1970, another strike left his shoulder seared. In 1972, his hair was set on fire and Roy had to dump a bucket of water over his head to cool off. On August 7, 1973, another bolt tripped through his hat and hit him on the head, set his hair on fire again, threw him out of his truck and knocked his left shoe off. On June 5, 1976, a sixth strike in 1976 left him with an injured ankle. On June 25, 1977, the last lightning bolt to hit Roy Sullivan sent him to the hospital with chest and stomach burns in 1977. His wife was also struck once, when a sudden storm welled up as she and her husband were out hanging wash on the backyard clothesline. On September 28, 1983, Roy Sullivan died at age 71, reportedly of a self-inflicted gunshot wound over troubles unrelated to lightning. A four-month-old baby girl survives three days without drowning after the Japanese earthquake on Sunmi hit. The earthquake on Sunmi off the coast of Japan claimed thousands of lives within a very short period, and this disaster proved to be one of the worst that the world has experienced in a very long time. The loss of life and destruction of property was at an unimaginable scale, and the rescue teams on site were losing hope with every single body they found dead. However, 
three days after the destruction, some rescuers heard cries from a baby under piles of debris, and when they removed the debris they discovered a four-month-old baby alive with no visible injuries. The fact that the baby survived that Sunmi and that she did not drown is still a mystery. The baby was reunited with her family later on, and this proved to be one of the best moments in the aftermath of the disaster. Captain James Riley in 1815 American Captain James Riley and his crew were shipwrecked on the coast of North Africa. They were captured and sold into slavery which led to an insane journey through the heart of the Sahara Desert. Eventually they were freed by a sympathetic British merchant. Snovulovic On January 26, 1972, a Yugoslav Airlines DC-9 departed from Copenhagen for Belgrade via Zagreb with 28 passengers and crew. At an altitude of 33,000 feet, a bomb in the cargo section, planted by the Ustash Croatian separatist group, exploded. The plane disintegrated and crashed on the mountains. In what must be one of the greatest survival stories of all time, Stuart Desvsnovulovic survived the 33,000-foot descent sitting on the tail of the plane. 22-year-old Vulovic wasn't even supposed to be on that plane. As she later stated in an interview, it was another Vsna who was supposed to be on that flight, but she was happy with the mix-up as it allowed her to make her first trip to Denmark. She ended up with a fractured skull, two broken legs, and three broken vertebrae, one of which was crushed and left her paralyzed from the waist down. Vulovic spent several months in and out of hospitals. Operations allowed her to walk again. She became a celebrity when the Guinness Book of World Records invited her to a ceremony in London with Paul McCartney. She is listed for surviving the longest fall without a parachute. Vulovic is now a national hero in Serbia and spent the late 90s marching in Belgrade against Slobodan Milosovic. Maria Bellin A family of five whose miraculous survival in the boxing date Sunmi has been turned into a Hollywood film today relived their ordeal as their story prepares to hold the big screen. Key Alvarez, his wife Maria Bellin and their three young children were swept away by a massive wall of water as they lounged around the pool at the Orchid Resort Hotel in Thailand in 2004. Mrs. Bellin recalled how she had just told off her eldest son, Lucas, then 10, for drinking Coca-Cola when they heard a huge roar as the wave bulldozed its way through the complex. As she shouted at Lucas to get into the pool, Mrs. Bellin was tossed through a plate glass window and forced through the walls of the hotel. She said, I remember being pushed against walls. You could feel them trembling and breaking, feeling them as they gave way one after another. Single quote the drowning sensation was like being in a spin dryer. I saw many tunnels underwater, tunnels with lights at the end, the kind of vision that people tell you they see when they are going to die. Believing the rest of her family had died, Mrs. Bellin admitted there were moments when she felt like giving up. But she said life was wonderful again when she finally surfaced and saw Lucas being swept past her alive. Lucas, who is now 18 and studying medicine at University College London, said jumping into the pool likely saved his life. I had never seen anything of that scale, he told the Sunday Times magazine. It may as well have been the apocalypse. The pair managed to grab hold of each other, clinging to a tree trunk, before eventually finding themselves in a kind of swamp. Mrs. Bellin later needed a life-saving operation to repair a horrific wound on her thigh and for deep gashes to her chest. Lance Corporal Matthew Croucher When the enemy throws a grenade at you, your chances of survival are slim to none. However, Lance Corporal Matthew Croucher's story is very different, one of bravery and survival against all odds. When the then 24-year-old British soldier on a mission to Afghanistan in 2008 tripped on a wire and accidentally triggered a grenade, he had to think fast in order to save the lives of his comrades as well as his own. In a feat of sheer bravery and selflessness, Lance Corporal Matthew Croucher shouted, Grenade, and then dove on it. Thanks to his quick thinking he landed on the grenade with his bag between his body and the explosive, with the bag absorbing most of the impact. As opposed to being blown to pieces, Lance Corporal Matthew Croucher was instead thrown into the air by the force, landed safely and only suffered a nosebleed and a terrible headache. His act of bravery not only saved his life and his comrades' lives, but it earned him the George Cross Award, 
the highest reward for gallantry. Slam of heroics. After being sentenced to 25 years in a Siberian gulag, this Polish officer along with six others escaped the camp in Yakazdk and marched 4,000 miles on foot across the frozen Siberian tundra, the Gobi Desert, through Tibet and over the Himalayas to British India.